<laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to another video. Um, I just spent the whole day working on my A Court of Mist and Fury video. Um, next week, the first part of it will be coming out. I'm filming parts two and three and it's taken a while but now I am done I've just had my Korean class and I have finished editing the portion that I have filmed so I'm going to treat myself to a nice little book and I am going to be reading where is it oh I just I read book lovers last night I will be reading these twisted bonds uh, by Lexi Ryan so I've talked about I haven't actually looked at the cover <laughs> if you guys haven't watched my video. I was exactly a year ago, actually. I was back in the US helping my parents move across the country, struggling with jet lag as one does, and I happened to pick up a book. I forget exactly how I found it, but I saw that it was being marketed as a big thing for like Aquatar fans or even like the Cruel Prince or something, and I was just hungry for some kind of fantasy. I think I was in a little bit of a reading slump. Anyway, long story short, picked up this book and it was a length in which I knew I could read it kind of in one sitting if I really wanted to. And so I did because I really thought it was a standalone. And once again, had jet lag, my sleeping pattern was already messed up, but I decided I ended up reading until about two or three a.m. I think, and I was, I had about 40 pages left of the book when I had this horrible sinking feeling where I was looking at the plot and all the threads were just like totally frayed and I was like, oh my god, this isn't a standalone. And sure enough, I was right. This book had come out probably like it was only a week old by the time that I had picked it up. So I had to wait another year to get the second one and the second one came out like two days ago it was not a good book i am not reading it because i'm so hungry to know more about this story i'm reading it simply to tell you guys about it because i told you guys about the first one and mm, like i said i did a whole video about it and thank god i did because i tried my best to actually read slash like skim read um the first one again which is called these hollow vows and i thought you know what who needs a YouTube summary? I can just reread it myself. Unreadable. Once you know the plot, it's an impossible book to read again. Needless to say, I simply watched my own video again. Thank you, Past Carrie, for making it. If you don't want to watch that and you just kind of want to know vaguely what happens, this is about a girl who has been orphaned and so she has to work for this evil lady um, because her mom like went off into fairy and married like a fairy guy, whatever, abandoned her and her sister. Her sister gets sold off to the evil fairy king. So she just goes to fairy obviously to go get her sister when actually it was a trap. The evil fairy king is like, actually we wanted you. Her name is Brie. She's like, actually we wanted you Brie because you are going to go into the other court. There's the unseelie court, which is bad and the Seely Court, which is good, you're going to sneak into the Seely Court and pose as a potential bride for the prince, and while you're there, you're going to snoop around and get us this artifact that the queen stole from me that I want. So what is going on is that the good fairies, the Seely Court, are holding basically like the bachelor it's essentially what's that called the selection it's literally the selection if you've read those books and also spoiler oh this is all spoilers by the way um stop now and forever hold your peace if you don't want any spoilers goodbye leave <laughs> um are you gone Okay, spoilers, the prince actually already knows Brie and loves Brie and wants to marry Brie, so it's very much a rigged game, let's just say, for The Bachelor. But she feels very betrayed by him, or what, you know, she's, she's doing anything to not marry him and stay in the castle longer so that she can find this object, give it to the evil king, get her sister back, get the fuck out of fairy, is what they're hoping to do. Of course, there's like, along with the bright golden boy good prince, there's also this mysterious, outcasted, evil, not prince named Finn. Guys, the ending is essentially 
Akutar. <laughs> it made no sense. There are plot holes galore. You can see things happening a mile away. It was just like, uh, I, in my rage, I think, must have gone onto Kindle and pre-ordered it. And I have it, oh god, just like, you see. I feel like this one's gonna be much spicier <laughs> than the previous one. There were like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but, um, like I said, I read Book Lovers last night and it was so good that I feel like if I don't just jump right back on that horse and read a book, I'm going to be in a reading slump because nothing's going to make me feel as happy as that book did. So in we go to these twisted bonds. I am so hungry. I'm going to get dinner um, with my husband and our friend in about an hour. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of reading. I'll check back in with you when I've read enough that I can say things about it. I'm really hoping to finish it like tonight and maybe tomorrow morning, but I think that's a little too ambitious. How many pages is it? 486. Well, I like the first line. Um, ooh. Oh damn, I think, it, I think this is a dream. Oh, it's not. Is it a dream? Okay, I've literally just started reading the book while you guys are sitting here, I'm so sorry. Maybe it's good, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, um, linked down below will be the video for <laughs> the first book and I will check in with you again soon. So welcome to the video um, and see ya. Hi, so reading last night didn't happen at all. <laughs> so I started reading this morning. I ended up, I did actually reread a bit of these hollow vows. Now I'm on page, about page 50 of the new book. Things I forgot. So there's Finn is the dark brooding prince. Sebastian is the golden semi secretly evil prince. And then there's Brie. So what I forgot is that Finn's father was in love with Brie's mother and like sacrificed his life to save Brie. So they're not related, but like, and then it's either that Sebastian is Finn's half brother or just Finn's cousin. I forget which one it is and I don't think it super duper matters. That's what we're dealing with. We're also focusing heavily now on the children being separated from their parents in labor camps part of the plot. I forgot about that completely. There's that. I forgot that the unseely fairies can communicate through dreams so they like every time Brie falls asleep she's got these two princes coming in trying to talk to her and she's just like get out. Oh and then of course she has now bonded with Sebastian even though everyone told her not to but yeah she bonded and so now akin to Akatar, she can like feel his thoughts and stuff and so he's like apologizing 24 7 through the bond and she's like how do i turn this off it's overwhelming i feel like i'm gonna call it now on page 47 even though i feel like this would take so much work to undo what she's done what if what if she did a reverse Akatar, where i feel like maybe sebastian could be secretly good like a coward but not a bad guy i'm just trying to think of how she can make this like not straight up Aquatar. anyway that's what i'm doing the writing um there's a scene where she wakes up and there's blood everywhere because she like in her sleep killed the guards with her knife and i feel like there has to be granted thinking about it now it is a difficult word but there's got to be other ways to describe things other than bloody it was like the guards were laying bloodied on the ground and I looked at my knife and it was bloody and then I looked at the walls and they were bloody. It was just, the word bloody was used. I'm gonna say 20 times on one page. I'm gonna try and read more of a significant chunk so I can actually update you on things, but that's where I am. Also, why does Finn, Finn's name is Finn, all right, or Finnegan, which I feel like is a relatively normal name in the grand scheme of things. His brother's name is like, Vexius and his dad's name is like Odegatron or something like why is his name just Finn? 
Anyway, see you in maybe a couple hundred pages. We are on page 131 and they are practicing mental shields. Okay. Hi, this is a weird angle, but anyway, I am on page 162. The love triangle is still there, but it's actually not being talked about a whole lot. Now, Brie is actually staying in the Wild Fae court. So there's Unseelie, Seelie, and now there's Wild Fae. Turns out the queen, she has her labor camps, but she is using the children specifically to harvest this rock stuff that makes powers strong. I don't know. Anyway, Sebastian is shocked because he asked his mom to get rid of the labor camps and believed her when she said that she did, but he didn't realize that she was also using children in the labor camp, whatever. Okay, so Bree talked to him, he got rid of the labor camps, good for him. In the Wild Fae Court is where Finn and his friends, and then also just the Wild Fae in general, have been rescuing unseely kids from the labor camps and have them in kind of like these refugee camps if they can't find their parents. And now there's this plague going on where the kids are all falling asleep, like falling into comas. This is where we learn, I mean, we, we learned this already, but this is where it becomes important. Because Sebastian and Brie bonded, Brie gave the crown to Sebastian, but then because Sebastian loved her and saved her with the potion of life, she became Fae, and so the magic of the crown stayed with her. Sebastian can't take the throne because he only has half of the puzzle. You need the crown and the magic. Brie can't take it because she doesn't have the crown, she only has the magic. And then Finn is just here with nothing, and he's just like, what the fuck? Like, if my dad hadn't given you all this power hubbub stuff, I would have just been king like I was supposed to be and I wouldn't have had to deal with my stupid half-brother or this mortal girl, you know? Like, ugh. That's a problem that seems like we could sit on it for a while, right? Wrong, because the reason the children are falling asleep and into comas is because it's a sign of, like, a dying court. So because there's no king the children go into co um it seems like sebastian really does still love brie like she can feel the sincerity through the bond but it just seems like he's kind of an idiot and he's got a real big ego problem like he thinks that he is fulfilling a prophecy weather update it started to rain so i'm definitely staying inside and i i'm 34 percent of the way through i think i can finish this today i'm gonna eat my apple and continue so see ya so this is our first steamy passage but it illustrates that she just keeps repeating these things like the bloody 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 wall you know and then it's like the finest wine and then like rich red wine and she says wine like about a hundred times previously it's just difficult to read are you telling me i'm reading about another fairy sex ritual no <laughs> he's also like winking at her over and over and over again like before he does anything he winks at her <laughs> stop winking this is literally the next page <laughs> okay <laughs> Do I have updates for you? I am on page 345 out of 486. Um, what has transpired since I have last spoken to you? Sebastian and Finn have agreed to work together to show some kind of, I don't know, to like calm down. I guess the unseelie court people were starting to revolt or whatever. And so to buy them time, they have shown that they are allied in some way, but Finn believes the answer to all of their problems regarding like the power shift and blah, 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 lie with Queen Mab, who long story short, but she's one of the reasons why there are even two courts in the first place, right? She's dead. How do we talk to her? We have to go to the underworld. In order to go to the underworld, they have to talk to a priestess who can open a portal. In order to talk to that priestess, they have to go on this like multiple day trip to the rural outskirts of the Unseelie court Brie has to come because she's like a good bargaining chip or something uh I really thought that they were gonna end this with like some kind of polyamory situation going on seems like it's not the case um she has very firmly I feel like this book even though it is very Akotar esque 
I feel like she's suddenly bringing in some like Cassandra Clare vibes because she has decided that she wants to be with Finn whether it's love or lust. She wants to physically be with Finn but because her and Sebastian are bonded every time they like get close to doing anything she suddenly feels like heartbreak and agony and my neighbors are still drilling something into my wall. Calm down. How many pictures do they have to hang? It's been weeks. Anyway, so we get a lot of that. She has to like pause and be like, ah, my heart is breaking, but it's not her heart, it's Sebastian's. Pretty much that's the only thing that has occurred for the past, I think it's been 200 pages since I've talked to you. They've traveled, Sebastian is not in the picture at all, and it's just a lot of like almost sexy scenes, but then Sebastian's little heart just breaks. That's all, that's... That's about it. The thing that I ended with, the thing that I took a lunch break for, is that now we have decided somehow, some way, I still don't fully understand it, hopefully they explain it better. Now Brie is apparently a descendant of Queen Map. So even though like Queen Map's line supposedly all died out and then it was Finn and Sebastian's family that took over, but apparently Brie is related to Queen Map. So she's like the queen. So all of a sudden now everybody's just bowing down to her, including Finn, like all of her friends are like, my queen, that's where I stop. Also, there seems to be something funky. Finn, it's not talked about a lot, but Finn is sick but it seems like his sickness is tied directly to Bree's power. So whenever she uses her magic, it drains his magic. And if they drain their magic, they die. I don't know. Like, I'm just going on this ride. I really have no idea what's going on. I swear to God, if this ends up being a trilogy, you also can't break the bond, by the way, that she and Sebastian have without somebody dying. There might be another way. There's also this weird concept called tethering that has been played upon. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. The winking, the winking. When I, I really, I should look into it, like if she actually got an editor. That is one of my pet peeves, is seeing a word repeated many, many times that's bad enough like a descriptive word but when you're talking about an actual action that he's doing can you imagine him walking around just like everything he says everything he does i would be concerned about his health anyway he winks every five seconds and i can't handle it i feel like the first book was funny because it was just so dumb and like you could see all of the plot twists coming but with this the plot is just so it doesn't make any sense like i can't even see what's coming and i don't feel like when things happen so like it was a big deal to try and get finn and sebastian to become allies they agreed to it but we never actually saw it and so it just like time passed and all of a sudden i realized oh they allied i thought that was supposed to be a bigger deal they're like built up as important things and then just kind of like dropped off i don't know so like the uh Anyway, I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I thought they said the Crimson Frog. <laughs> Guys, I'm getting real nervous. Things aren't wrapping up. I have 26 pages left, and this could really go either way as far as if there's going to be a third book. So I'm just going to record me reading it. So... Sebastian saving a secret for the last chapter. She got me there. She got me there. Epilogue. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Literally, my chest was so tight. Okay. This seems like the end. How did you know that black leather was my favorite color? <laughs> Okay, thank God it's done. Okay. <laughs> it's a duology, everybody. We're safe. Where did I leave you? Oh, right. So she's the queen. Remember how I mentioned that tethering thing? Yeah. Finn mentioned that his family line has been tethered to Queen Mab's line. 
like they are always the devoted servants to Queen Map. So that's why he was sick is because he didn't realize he was actually tethered to Brie this whole time. No matter what, even if she didn't break the bond with Sebastian, he was always gonna have to be close to her and that would kill him, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, they go to see Queen Mab, blah, 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 blah. The only thing that they can do to fix this whole kerfuffle is either kill the queen, Sebastian's mom, who's still alive, or solidify the bond with like the river of ice that makes the bond unbreakable, blah, blah, blah. It seems like it's impossible to kill the queen, so they're like, fuck it, we're just gonna do the bond thing. She tells Sebastian very firmly that they there will never be romance between them, but she'll sacrifice it for her people because that's what makes a great ruler. And then they get captured on their way there by the queen. They just kill the queen. They just kill the queen. Um, and so it seems like it's kind of okay, but for some reason now Sebastian is wearing two crowns, his mom's crown and the unseelie crown, and they still need to do the bond thing. Anyway, they start walking to go do the bond, and Sebastian is like, you know what? Like, I didn't just want to be a king. I wanted to be a great king. And Brie is just like, okay, like, yeah, cool, dude. And he's like, look at that gem that I gave you. And she thought that it was a firestone, which is the thing that boosts your power, but it's not, it's a bloodstone. But aren't bloodstones like extinct? It's like a magical thing that Queen Mab made and it can turn you mortal. And so what I thought was gonna happen is that she was gonna choose to become mortal and it would kind of like fix everything again. But the twist was, if you're already here, I swear to God, and you tell me that I spoiled this book for you, it's your own damn fault. The twist is Sebastian uses the bloodstone on himself and makes himself mortal. He can still become king of the Seely court. I don't know why. It doesn't seem to make sense. But because he died an immortal death, the bond has been broken and now Brie has the unseely crown and the magic. So she takes her place on the unseely throne and she can be with Finn and her sister is here in fairy and everything is happy even though they have a lot of work to do and then they're gonna work together to glamour Sebastian so that he can look like a fairy and continue to be king and he said that you know to be a great king you need to make sacrifices and I wanted to be a great king so that's what he did and that's that is that it that's that so overall this book was not great. Was it an interesting story to tell you guys? Sure. Was it enjoyable to read? No, honestly. I really couldn't tell the difference. Like Finn and Sebastian, all of the voices basically, all the characters sound the same. You know what? Lexi Ryan tried to do the thing and I read it and I reviewed it and there it is. Um, a year of torture closing that chapter of my life. Thank you for being here with me and I will Catch you guys next time. What do I have? I'm really excited to give you my what I read in July video because I read so much um, and some books I'm really excited to talk about. And then I just have uh, a bunch of my wrap ups, my plot outlines for you coming. So um, I will see you guys then. Thank you always, hope you guys are doing pretty okay. And let me know if you have any fantasy recs that you think I haven't read yet. Um, I would appreciate them so much. Okay? See you later. Bye.